Good morning everyone, so this morning we're at a Volkswagen Volkswagen Golf 2005, so this is the 1K model So the customer's complaint with this, this is a diesel, the TDI Customer's complaint is when he comes out in the morning uh, The car will not crank Flat battery So he has a parasitic draw somewhere along the line And so we've Give the car a run, we've just let it sit and we've shut it down and we've put down this latch just using a screwdriver and we've done the same on the passenger's door and just to know that you can tell that the car is going to sleep or is fully asleep when you see this. A little flashing LED, that is the car alarmed, immobilised and it's sleeping. So well, let's look at the amps draw this. So there is uh, the parasitic draw when the car's sitting shut down after 10 minutes. 680 milliamps. So that's just over half an amp. So it's far too high. We need to be under 100 milliamps, ideally under 50 milliamps. So let's get the... That fancy camera. What's it called again, Rudy? <laughs> Thermal, thermal, uh, thermal imager and see if we can co solve this problem quickly. So before we go any further, visual inspection is always very important. Look at this. Oh. There's like a wire that's been burnt. In fact, who would put that in there? Very strange. Never mind. We'll still use the thermal imager. We'll cover a couple of hot spots. There's one up there already. Is it 443? Four, 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 go and put your finger on it, my man. Wait, is that this? Four, 433. This one Aye, here? so that's hot. And another one's hot down here, 458. So <coughs> what we we'll can do, well, we'll just pull 458 and we'll watch the, the meter. Made no difference. What, day 4.33? Made no difference. Oh, it did, oh, it did, it shot it through the roof. Leave it out and see if it comes back down. Let's keep my high up, we'll get a couple of minutes. What one did you take out, lad? This in here. Oh, I think it was actually the other game we were looking for. Right. The other 4.33. See back in. I mean, yeah, right. thing keeps shutting down. Right, so, it would touch that in. Right, that's the game we should have pulled out. Right. It made no difference now, so just pop it back in and see. We'll let it settle down again, let's see if we're still alarmed. The mobiliser's still flashing, so we're still in a good place. Pulled up this wire, it comes from the battery. It goes to the fuse box, and I believe that then feeds through the other fuse box, which is at the driver's side. So, and the other, the black cable, I think, goes down to the starter motor and the alternator. So we must follow this leg, so you can see it comes in, and it comes into that fuse there. So maybe if we do voltage drop tests over these ones, and we can see where it's going to, either into the fuse box or out to another leg. So let so, me do that. <clears throat> I think you've seen we came off this wire, which goes into the fuse box in there, and uh, he's taking all the well, all the power's going into there. So we need to find out what the leg it's going to. So this first one here, this is an 80 amp fuse. And you can see a reading on here, that's 720 milliamps. So we need to find out where this 80 amp, I think that's, is that's 80 amp? Ah, uh, 80. There we go, 80 amp, where that fuse goes to. Because you would think maybe the 100 amp would go to the other fuse box. No sure. So we'll look at a wiring diagram. So we looked at all data and we figured out that this is designated as fuse SA6, Sierra Alpha 6. So this fuse feeds the fuse box 
at the driver's side, so we need to then take our hunt to there. And you can see we're still, we've dropped a little bit, we're still at 480 milliamps. SA6, fuses and fuse holder C on left under dash panel. And it must feed SC43 to 45, 28, 22, 18, 19, blah, 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 blah. Also feeds the auxiliary air heater control unit. I don't think we'd have that, so let's go into this dash and see what we can find there. So this is the one we're now hunting, so I think maybe the easiest idea, because I don't think we can get a little fuse buddy into there, is maybe start pulling them and see what one we head for. So we're moving on, so we used a little amp hound and we located where the problem was. We had a, a reading on that. Well, if the fuse is good, you get a reading of all zeros. But we then got a reading, what was it already? Zero, zero, 006 or something like that. So I'll show you what fuse it was. It was this five amp fuse here. And its location is, I just move you a wee bit already. No, just, its location is there. And that is fuse 35. I'll just focus you on 35. So we'll go to our board and see what that covers. And just to note, the alarm system is still activated. So fuse 35, SC35, and it's holder C, which is that is at the end of the dashboard. Five amp, we agree with that. So it covers the G273 interior monitoring sensor. That's if you're in, if somebody breaks into your car and there's movement within the car, the alarm goes off. G384 vehicle inclination sender, no sure about that or H12 alarm horn. So our money's on this H12 being shorted out and causing a high parasitic draw. So we're going to see if we can live without this fuse and give it back to the customer and see how it goes. But guaranteed, the alarm horn can put, in fact, what we can do, put the scan tool on it and see if we can activate this thing. So we've just started the car and shut her back down again. So we're just going to monitor what our amperage is. So we're still at 650, and that's just after a minute, so. Let's see if it takes a dive. Right, after removing that fuse and putting it back in, did not work. We decided to scan it for codes, oh dear. So in the central convenience module, we've got this 001134. <laughs> Alarm horn. Now, that to me is our issue, that's what's causing our parasitic drop. So we'll try this horn here. So that's okay, so I now need to locate the alarm horn, wherever that is. Sometimes it can be in the boot. And the reason I know that the alarm horn doesn't work, we've done the actuation test. So by list. So if you come in here, alarm horn. So we put, there we go, alarm horn, H12, okay. So it says it's not running, so we hit start. So it says function unavailable. So I think that's unavailable because it ain't working. So let's let's locate it. Data for the alarm horn. And it says Remove the front right wheelhouse liner. So that's what we're Is it still not rotten, eh? We just need to keep stripping. Eh? So that's the driver's side. You come up the arch. Ready? You point it, my man. Oh, that's it there. So we must pop rivet that out. So Roddy removed the alarm horn. The alarm horn H12 yesterday after I went away at my work. So that was shorting it out. And I kept seeing in that video pop rivets. He had to drill out the pop rivets to get this out, so we're going to see if this will work without replacing it, because I checked on eBay, these are very expensive, these things. So let's look at our figures now, see what we've got. So that's after 30 seconds or so, we're doing it 100 milliamps, so we're a lot lower now. So I'll just give it a little more time and see what happens here, we should get even lower than As that. As you can see, the alarm is activated. So after two minutes... That is spot on. 50 milliamps. Did it go lower than that, Roddy? You get a wee while longer. But we did find the batteries know the best, because I think it's had a parasitic 
discharged for so long. Uh, so maybe need to renew that, but at least if he does it this time, you're not going to have an issue. So there we go. Down at 14 milliamps now, and that'll be the LED. So we'll call that one a fix.